my uh, co-presenter, uh, Charlie Danoff, uh, is I think on an airplane on his way to Singapore, he had travel uh, travel changes. Um, so he was going to be there in person giving the talk, and I was going to be joining remotely. As it turns out, um, I'm I'm remote, and he's also even more remote. Um, so, uh, but that's okay. We've worked on this together, um, and we're going to talk today about a workshop that we've run um, in several different formats um, over the over the last year. Um, but rather than just give an account of the um, of the what we've done in the workshop in the past, I'm going to uh, walk through the methods that we've used. So we call it the Open Future Design Workshop. Um, there's a preprint here if you write down this number two three zero six dot. Uh, 08426 that will describe some of the case studies that we've um that we've done um so far uh so but i'm going to talk with you today about the methods so um and they're written down on these little cards so i'll kind of zoom around on the cards um here to uh explain what we're talking about so they're, they're methods for envisioning and exploring the future together in in your minds and in groups so um it's fun to start with this one here called uh Derive comics. Um, so you want to develop some kind of future together um, to explore as a group. You have your group, um, but everyone has their own experiences and their own lives. So what are you going to do to make a, a shared experience? Gather some data. So um, go for a walk or look out the window um, or just close your eyes and, and ex explore something in your mind around the theme of the workshop, assuming you know what that is. And then document. Um, ah, okay. Document what... Um, what you see in your mind in a way that makes it possible to share with others. So um, those could be photos, a screenshot, uh, post-it notes, or whatever you might like. Um, so um, if you're there in the audience, you might uh, take a second to close your eyes and imagine, you know, something that you encountered on your way to the conference uh, that you might like to share with other people. We won't have time to, to report back, but you could imagine uh, these things and have that already do that exercise. And then if we were going to do the workshop, um, we try to build a, a meaning map of the of the things that people have collected in their interactions of the previous um, activity uh, and distill some kind of shared meaning. So again, everyone has their own experience. Um, so let's talk together about the problems and opportunities that everyone sees um, in those explorations they did. So maybe some of these will cluster together. So maybe you saw um, a case of uh, disparate uh, on the way to, to the conference, you might have seen some something that made you feel upset and you want to share those things. Or maybe you saw something that makes you happy and you want to share those things. And you might find common themes around um, how you're how you're feeling about that. Of course, everyone's going to have their own perspectives on that. Some something someone might find something upsetting that someone else finds uh, gives them pleasure. That's possible. And that's OK, too. The map can contain um, all of that information. Uh, just make sure you document those different viewpoints viewpoints to get everyone on the same page. And if we were doing this in the workshop, we might do this around tables uh, in smaller groups um, rather than uh, all on one big map. And so that's that's this uh, card here called Structured Conversations. Having convened the workshop, if unstructured conversations are likely to take lots of time without yielding some uh, concrete benefits, then structure the conversations around your shared inter interest to move things uh, forward more effectively. So maybe it's necessary to find the themes and create breakout rooms or breakout groups accordingly. Um, when I ran this once at the university I work, I just did group people by faculty and so I've had some of those conversations per faculty. Um, and now once you've got all these different uh, groups broken out, you're, you may want to or need to increase the participant control because if you only have one facilitator, um, they're not going to be able to be in every group all at once. Um, so you need to have people doing things inside their groups, for example, taking notes. So um, we have a nice system for taking notes across kind of layers of meaning. Um, so in these little groups, uh, you, you can explain to them how to how to take these structured notes. Um, they can be responsible for that and, and uh, responsible for reporting uh, back to other groups as well. So those are two of the things you could do to increase participant control that there are other things to do as well. Um, Something else to mention here is this concept of reinfusing expertise. So what I, I like to do in these uh, workshops is you're trying to build this meaning map, um, but you want to you want to get everyone on the same page. But you actually want to kind of incorporate their their thoughts and feelings as human beings before you incorporate their expertise. So this is why I'm talking about the things you've seen on the on the way to the conference or the things you might see in your neighborhood. 
if it turns out that you're also a, you know, a sociologist or a um, climate expert or a building uh, an architect, um, something like that, then uh, those pieces of expertise can be used to flesh out the map. Um, that might be a second phase of activity. <clears throat> and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So this is something we can move towards. And I think the last one on this, on this set of uh, ideas here is to do your research. So if you're, if you're running a workshop, um, uh, it, you can already start doing the research before the workshop starts by interviewing participants um, and starting to build your own meaning map, which you might share with them beforehand. So um, these are good instructions for basically getting people on the same page, right? So if you if you want to do the research to start with, then um, then that will help. Um, and you could do that. You could help as well with getting people on the same page with some context setting. So the theme might come from a workshop sponsor, convener, um, or from this previous research. And you can share that. So it's all about how we kind of get started, starting to build a, a, a perhaps a visual picture, one visual picture or multiple visual pictures, getting everyone, everyone towards the same page. This is the next uh, set of um, instructions for exploring the future. So now we've thought about um, these ideas uh, that people brought to the table, like things that they find exciting or things they find concerning uh, related to the topic that that they've been um tasked with or that they brought uh, a variety of topics. Um, so how do you explore that? Um, we like the idea of handing out some functional roles. So having tried this a few different ways, one of the ways we tried was some kind of role playing, like stepping into the persona of, um, you know, a type of uh, imagined character. That didn't really work as well for what we were trying to do as uh, taking these functional roles, which are um, giving people things that they can do inside of a conversation while they remain themselves and they, they continue to have their own expertise. So the first one here is uh, the wrinkler. And the, their their uh, role in the conversation is to think about what could go wrong. So as we've, as we've uh, brought everyone onto the same picture, uh, same map before, we're envisioning all these different themes that people had brought to the table, hooked up and aligned with each other in some way. That already is starting to tell a sort of story about what, um, how these things fit together. Do they fit together? You know, again, someone, people might have conflicting views. So uh, their perspectives on on what could go wrong or what could go right may be very different. Um, but for example, if you're envisioning a future in which a certain set of uh, local problems are being solved, uh, that's nice, but what if what if the local government or the local authority uh, doesn't um, doesn't get on board with the views of the citizens, and the citizens have to stage a, a uprising or something like that, or they at least have to stage a big campaign? And that's the kind of thing that the wrinkler might um, might propose in terms of what could go wrong. And this is helping to envision uh, different futures, so possible futures in which, uh, or maybe they're quite unlikely, but um, things aren't going the way we thought they would inside of this shared scenario. Uh, the next role is the time traveler uh, who asks the question, what has happened in the past and what could happen in the future? Um, and they're providing some historical context and anticipating alternate futures. So again, in the in the context of this kind of local project, maybe you could imagine some uh, local uh, movements that have, have worked in different ways in the past, achieving different kinds of goals. Um, you know, some might be more urban, some might be more rural. They may have... Um, different ways of working together. Um, you might uh, realize that in the future, we'll be working across contexts more effectively through uh, technology. Um, so you could imagine a future in which different local groups are, are networking together around themes that are shared and so forth. So again, this is just a kind of conversational role. Um, you could hand this physically hand this card out to someone and they could trade the cards during the conversation. So they don't have to be stuck as the time traveler forever. Um, the next role uh, is this analyst role. So, what are the what are the moving parts inside of your scenario that you've envisioned? So, um, maybe we focused in on a, a specific part of the future, like um, you know, if we're looking at local issues, maybe we're focusing in on on housing. Um, and so, you could focus in on all the current challenges and components of the potential solutions that are being devised in terms of local housing. So, who are the actors? What are the resources? What are the institutions? And you could uh, identify and look at how those things work together. So an example in, in Houston, uh, to address homelessness, uh, they formed a, a, a coalition of all the 
organizations that had anything to do with homelessness and they got them talking to each other and as a result of, of that uh the uh outcomes uh for people using their services significantly improved and that's all due to this kind of internal orchestration but the analyst also has another role which is to consider the challenges beyond the current focus and to identify and orchestrate the integration of those components outside so if you if you were looking at things related to homelessness you may also want to be looking at things like jobs and mental health and uh, families and um, migration or whatever the other things are that, that touch on the, the concepts related to having a home but aren't necessarily the, the uh, you know they're not necessarily the, the services and, and roles and actors specifically focusing on this topic um and then to make this all hang together uh we have these facilitator roles um so linkers and reflectors these are um looking at the proposed scenarios that people are coming up with like resolving homelessness or uh changing the way we use other local resources um these are things that are coming up in the conversation um how do these start to uh fit together so you know maybe we um want to change how we use certain local resources and that's going to create some jobs with, for people for example so these linkers have to be able to stay on their feet making these uh connections between the uh ideas that other participants are coming up with so I've called them facilitator roles because they're people who are facilitating the conversation but like I said in the spirit of that increasing participant control there's no reason not to hand out this card to someone who's just showed up on the day and ask them to start making some links. Um, and similarly, this other facilitating role is a reflector who can look at how that scenario is evolving. So maybe, you know, we've exhausted the topics, uh, or at least our knowledge about those topics, and we realized, you know, to make some progress, you'd have to ask an expert. So um, here we call, talked about this thing called a project action review, where you say, well, all right, we've, we've done our initial exploration, that's coming to an end. It's now time to um, take up another topic or look at another um, look at another uh, proposed problem that might come up, et cetera. So these reflectors can um, help kind of steer the conversation along. Um, so that's it in terms of how the exploring works according to this um, this system. So again, we found this way to get everyone on the same page and start to look at what what works and what doesn't work, and then explore what could work better, what has worked in the past. Um, so here's some examples that we we looked at in these are three examples all from the same workshop so these were th some of the scenarios and, and problems that people came up with so contested space so-called public space doesn't always feel welcoming to all members of the public it can be overrun with antisocial behavior it can feel exclusionary or uninviting um it can be the site of a conflict um, although the uses of public space are complex each space does not need to support every use equally so um, I think this is looking at the example of, of a public space which is used for public drinking and maybe that's uh okay at least for the people who are drinking there they want a place to, to gather but other people may not feel like that so the, the point is when you have a public space it can be used in different ways and, and this becomes a feature of the space that the uses are are contested um and that's interesting right so that it doesn't force any particular uh resolution of that problem or challenge um but uh it gives things to talk about um another one here is funding of public space even though public space is known to increase wellness in the population well-being priorities uh that would lead to increased funding for public space aren't universally adopted um in order to make the benefits of such investment clear uh we should increase transparency around investments in public welfare for example creating a register of impacts of local social enterprises in the case where the government isn't investing in that so this is again a proposing a proposing a solution rather than um looking at uh you know these these kind of strategies so this is saying here's a more developed uh possible solution but it's also outlining some of the problems so this is this is something that was coming out of that <clears throat> kind of exploration that I was talking about before um and here's another one rebalancing social services uh welfare related services should be supplied in balance with local needs um there often are not uh could varied expertise be integrated in a similar way to the domain specific skills practiced by Médecins Sans Frontier to ad address uh complex local challenges um so um those are some of the things that came out of the conversation I'm going to skip these for the moment and come back to them uh here are a number of other miscellaneous patterns that are are useful and I'm realizing uh this one I really wanted to look at um now so these are called 
pattern, pattern language components. Um, and all these cards that you're seeing here, when they have a context and a if then on them, they don't all have those, but some have this kind of structure uh, for talking about where these strategies can be used. So you're collaborating in this case with people who are new to design patterns. If these new people are being invited to create their own patterns, like these are starting to become, you know, problem solution pairs. Um, but they don't, they're not terribly acquainted with design patterns. You can introduce these dynamic keywords, however, uh, because therefore, and specifically to describe a gap or conflict, you allow, you know, help them talk about those gaps or conflicts in their situation, um, to talk about some causes in this, that are operating in the situation, um, and to describe some sort of rationale for what to do about it based on what's worked in the past or what maybe works in another place. Um, and then specifically to describe next steps they could take in their in their um, in their scenario. So these ones, although they've been re-abstracted down into text form, short paragraphs, were outlined by people using those keywords, uh, using cards on a on a table. Um, so I thought that was uh, a useful one to to share right away. Is is these cards can also be printed out and shared around. Um, so um, other things to say about it. So like, uh, how does this work in terms of its broader broader process? And one of the more recent ones I, I ran, I ran it at the university I work with and they're working on creating an open research action plan at the university. So um, what I did was I, I interviewed a bunch of people uh, to gather some initial themes and make that initial meaning map. Um, and then at the workshop, I ran through the activities uh, like we've talked about in the context of our life at the university. I'm talking about what works and what doesn't work for people there, how they'd like to see things evolving differently. And this is structured per faculty. And then I took a bunch of pictures. So they, they had laid all these themes out using pieces of uh, note papers and some of those cards I mentioned over here. So I took pictures and then I was able to analyze that into an outline using the supplied uh, template. So um, having gathered themes for the participatory project, uh, they may have some um, uh, explicit, uh, I think they should say structure, they may have some explicit structure in, in them uh, because of the way the information was gathered, so by faculty or by using these cards. But additional structure can be uh, created linking the intermediate artifacts into a relevant template. So we had these this linker role kind of making a map of every everything. Um, but now we are, uh, have leading as output from that process uh, a draft uh, open research strategy using someone else's template. So that's a that's a useful um, way to present the results. Um, uh, not not conclusive in saying this is the final thing, but it could also be structured as a as a project plan or a set of working groups. Um, you might create a online a new online community who will uh, work on the emergent themes which have been created. Um, this one talks about adapt layers as needed. So when I mentioned that I have a template for structured um, analysis of a given uh, uh, theme, this is called causal layered analysis. And the, the layers, uh, this is uh, uh, created, devised by someone called Sohail Inyatula, who's used it in, in various uh, consulting contexts, including with the UN and so forth. Um, the layers are litany, system, worldview, and myth. And that allows you to kind of drill down from the problems that people encounter every day to what where those problems are coming from how they fit together and the kind of deeper stories that people are telling so in the in the case of wikipedia we want to create a educational resource that everyone can access uh and the worldview is that well that that can be done with a wiki you know, or maybe that that's the system that can be done with a wiki the worldview is it can be done openly online giving everyone the the right to edit things but you know we're all familiar with the litany of problems that can come up like edit wars or uh vandalism or whatever so these are the problems that everyone's familiar with um but you know by and large those who are highly involved share the kind of same story and, and myth is not meant to be um a put down it's meant to be inspiring so like what's the what's the driving metaphor here you know maybe it's a an encyclopedia or an educational resource, or maybe it's a more profound thing like access to 
uh, knowledge and knowledge creation processes. So, but that said, this card is saying you can adapt the layers as needed. So if you're if you're talking about a challenge that has a more technical flavor, your, your layers might be something like the real time updates to the system uh, information or the dynamic user interactions. And you're you're instead of talking about worldview, you might talk about what languages, uh, like concrete programming languages, you're going to use, and what actions you're going to take. So this is a nice. Uh, starter pack of, of things to analyze and so people can take notes and you can easily teach them, you know, talk about the problems that um, come up in your situation and, and try to drill towards the shared meanings. And then in terms of this meaning map, if you have notes from different groups in that format, you can try to harmonize them. And, you know, when I did this across faculties, the different faculties came up with very different pictures. Uh, and that's that's inherently kind of interesting looking at those diverse perspectives. But like I said, you can adapt the analysis layers as needed. Um, some of the other things is is in a, in a in certain groups, if they're already oriented around a type of action or a type of um, agenda, um, we've developed some possible next steps. But if we leave without any concrete commitments, then then maybe nothing will happen. We, it was just a good conversation. So. Um, is it possible to introduce some early actions that people already do together in the workshop format, turning it into a working context that uh, begin to get people doing things? Um, so, um, yeah, and this, I, I think I've covered almost everything on this page except going meta. Going meta says that in the course of working on our project together, um, can we go meta to apply the project's methods to itself? So here, what I might do is take these cards and this conversation, if we had a bit more than half an hour, we could work together and kind of uh, having acquainted you in this in this briefing with the methods, we might try to fill in some new patterns and we might try to critique these methods and we might say, well, how are we going to use these methods in the future? Can we use these uh, at, at a future Wikimania, for example, to, uh, to you know, accelerate our way of working together? Um, or can we use these as we take them? Can we use these methods if we go back home to our other professional or um, volunteer contexts, social contexts, could we use some of these ideas in other contexts and really get into using some of these concepts, like what could go wrong, et cetera, to, uh, to workshop the methods themselves. And so that's this process of going meta. And we might say, well, for example, we might realize um, these roles, these uh, roles are great, but maybe we need some other roles beyond these ones to, to get the most impact out of the methods. Or we might say, well, you know, in half an hour, maybe it's been okay to have Joe talk at us a lot, but actually we could have made a micro workshop that just did one or two of these activities and and that was useful. So, okay, now, um, because I'm running out of things to, to cover, um, I'll leave a couple of minutes. I think there may be a chance for questions as well if they're facilitated, if, uh, if anyone wants to put questions in the chat, if that's possible or otherwise facilitate them. Um, I'm going to just share a little bit. So we ran, we ran another context. We ran the um, workshop in was a course, and we brought our paper along and shared it as a as a pre-reading. So that was this kind of context setting pattern. Everyone had read our paper, and then we came along and talked to the students who were developing um, projects in a computing course. So one of the student students enthusiastically said, uh, "These authors actively participated in our class, shared expertise." and created a collaborative learning environment. Their presence allowed us to gain deeper insights into the concepts and methodologies of the paper, leading to innovative project approaches. Um, by closely studying the patterns of patterns they identified in their research, I gained a fresh perspective on project organization and established the logical and coherent structure to my uh, work. Well, that, that's great as a, as a narrative, and it sounds it sounds very lovely, but really what it's saying is, is how are we uh, providing engagement and guidance uh, what are some better ways that we already have tried to provide engagement and guidance to people who are developing projects? So um, although this is a way to envision futures together, again, if people are working on projects, they've already envisioned a future. So what can we do to support that work as it goes along? Um, and the same uh, student said, the author's insights helped me to navigate common project development pitfalls um, through their emphasis on effective documentary. Um, uh, documentation, regular testing, and thorough project planning, I was able to avoid costly errors. Their guidance ensured a consistent progress trajectory and maintained the professionalism of my final project. So again, what kinds of scaffolding and structuring um, do we can we new, can we build or can we help people build that help them avoid mistakes? 
And the same thing with the scalability and adaptability. So that's it. That's the, that's the tool kit that we have here. That's primarily, like I said, uh, set up as a, as a workshop, but some of these um, concepts go a bit beyond the, the workshop format. Um, here's the preprint again, if you want to see the developing paper, this was uh, been submitted to um, pattern, uh, sorry, pattern languages of programs, which will take place in uh, Illinois um, very soon. Um, okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing and just see if I see anything coming in on the chat. Um, I've got, according to my, my talk, I've been talking uh, 24 minutes, but we started a little late, so I wanna make sure um, we're respecting the clock, but if there are questions, I'll read them in the chat. Yep, please wrap up, jump to latest. Okay, um, looks like we're on time. I don't see any questions uh, coming along here, um, but I hope that was useful for you. No question from the room, Nida. Mm, if there are questions, I will uh, drop my... Um... email in the chat. So you can email me. It looks like the next person's coming up maybe. So, okay. Thank you very much. I'll say goodbye. Thank you, Joe.